How are you? So the market sniper with FX coming at you today, and it's a Euro USD. That's the Euro USD. Yes, indeed. So on the Euro USD, you may recall a while ago um, on YouTube, we suggested here in this video here, dollar up and precious metals down um, during that period. I'm not going to play it. Let's pause, pause, pause. This was around uh, two months odd ago. And the key theme was beware the precious metals, dollar to be dominant. So precious metals to a degree was anti-dollar. Uh, dollar to be dominant and euro to be weak. Um, a couple of months uh, ago, this was after we're getting a lot of people encouraging a buying run, Mike Maloney, Peter Shift, etc., um, on gold and uh, silver. And in actual fact, it's the dollar that's been strong. So that was the video there roughly in the middle of your screen over here. Um, if I'm to use the mouse, this one over here. Uh, and we followed it up with a Euro uh, USD update a month ago, suggesting again that you want to be to the short side. Uh, and you saw the pound take a hammering and sell off. Um, but the Eurozone issues was then re-referred to up top here um, a week ago. And the potential for a deep dip on news does exist. By the way, this is not to show, say we get them all right, but um, on the try we had a potential continuation pattern on the second intro, and instead it rolled to the downside to take a breath. Still think it'll make the target, but it wasn't ready to do it at that moment. So it's not about being right or wrong, it's just hammering on a theme here on the euro and the dollar strength generally against both the euro and other uh, currencies. So let's take it to the charts and just see where we at. I'm also going to take you to a platform. Um, it's not uh, more to prove a point about uh, the failures in trailing stops and the lack of method that shakes short time frame traders out nearly every single time. So this is kind of a macro, but just to give you the real macro on FX, uh, we typically will go to the monthly um, so that you can see from whence we have come. And we are broadly in the midpoint of an extreme highs for the euro around about 150s and extreme lows down at uh, the, the into the 80s, so sub 90. These were extreme lows. Something quite interesting for you to contemplate, in fact, uh, on that. I'll do smallest of little draws here uh, for this period is that during that period, in the extremis, when it was at its absolute low, you got an amazing first uh, setup in a new trend on an in, uh, upside HVF at your absolute lows. And go drop a time frame and see that for overperformance to the upside, taking you from literally an extreme low to a point that largely I would describe as the extreme highs uh, range where it's probably overvalued for the Euro 145, 150 and the tops and tails of it all at the roundabouts, the 90 levels where it's probably deemed extreme oversold and undervalued roughly there. The interesting point is the midpoint of all of that that I would draw on the screen. Let's do it in an orange so it's slightly less um, in your face. Would be roughly where we are now. Um, so 150 and 90. You had about 100 and 130. Uh, geez, have I done that right? It must be on some form of a log scale in, uh, in effect here. Yeah? So forgive me, I must check that out for a, a, a drawing. I might be scaling are different because it's showing you the lines. Um, so in actual fact, that little green line is at 119. The key point being, it's easy for you, for, for you to understand when you're more likely to get upside performance at an extremist low out of a squeeze volatility situation and then how zigs and zags near these levels where you are close to the extreme and you get that little bit of a roundingness nature of this uh, in there that set up one of the best sell-offs uh, in the euro um, in a long, long time. Um, then it had a rally. Um, Trump was kind of like, yeah, Germany, you're getting too much advantage on the trade front. That was that rally. Uh, anyway, let's take it down. Um, that's your super macro. And I always suggest doing a super macro uh, viewpoint. But let's go back to um, the chart. 
that I had for you. So this was all part of the, you know, we're going to levy uh, rates on BMWs coming out of Mexico into America because you, your currency is too weak. You're a manipulator. You know, that's the narrative anyway. So this traditionally is how, as HVF method in our premium areas, we've been sharing and discussing um, the Euro USD and what you kind of ha have a feeling to know. That was an upside HVF for the funnel. We did say, as I mentioned, just over two months ago, that this potential failure point um, would see dollar strength. So a big market sniper event, we call this like a, a focal point and a market sniper event where you need your sights and you need to be closely uh, focused is there. And it's confirmed with the run of those support levels that were here. You were squeezing and squeezing. So you definitely triggered there. You got a little bit of a reaction down, 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 very safe trade. Note also, if I highlight, um, only HVF traders would have had this information in there. But there was a key funnel level. Look how you bounced and you rallied. We would expect that. And it goes right the way through. Look how it served as where it was temporary support for a while. Um, you can see it here. Support. Um, it became resistance there um, from that point um, on in there that's your funnel loan so the question then comes down to okay so what's going on in here and we'll drop down into that but before i leave the key aspect is an amazing thing you will learn on a program with us is that we often get fractalization in head and shoulders okay what am i talking about head and shoulders where is it coming from it's coming from this And therefore, this weak right shoulder, um, and we like that. We like to see the momentum softer on the right-hand side. Um, now, you have a couple of necklines. You have your conservative HVF neckline that would go from your uh, extreme high. So in targeting, we typically use uh, purple, which would go from your extreme high to your axis point. That's the midpoint in that funnel, and that would be generated down that same length. Um, but we also have what we call the HVF method of necklines, which is roughly where it is right now, which is why I'm doing that uh, movie uh, and YouTube for you to enjoy. And in terms of that, uh, let me do this one in red. Ooh, let's go pink, go on. Um, so in that sense, We only work on horizontal structures and we would probably take it at that. That's a bit of a fat, juicy line. But again, if you were then targeting for that, um, and I'm going to make these lines a little bit narrow and I'm really to be feel precise. That would go right down to there and that would generate targets right down to there. Now, the key point about all of this is you weren't far off tapping out at 126 you're well past 125s yeah but we look for the key levels largely to be run so it's well past 125s this neckline is in and around the 116s so you've got the better part of 900 pips uh, here to the macro neckline 900 pips Do I mean 9,000? I think I've gone a bit batty there. 2,500 down to uh, 1,600. No, I mean 900 pips. Uh, and then the 900 pips sell-off uh, from a 116 um, is going to take you right down to around the 107s uh, level potentially as a down leg, which is, if you can recall, will bring you back, if we look at uh, the, some of the history, back down to these levels here, which is why I was asking the question, is all well in Euroland? Is all well in Euroland? Okay, so uh, let's save that one and say goodbye to it because it's starting to get nice and uh, Francis messy. 
Um, but hopefully if the bits get added uh, slowly, you guys are following what we're up to and all about. So we want to go back um, to that Euro USD chart. Let's close the draw tool and we're going to change that time frame uh, a little bit. So I want to go in now and talk to you about trailing stops. And this is my pet hate. All my guys that do my programs know this and nobody utilizes them. We use targets and we have one fixed level that we lock in early as a stop. And but for new HVFs, there are no trailing stop. So we want to have a look at this piece of price action that went in here and have a bit more detail. By the way, there's lots to do in a dollar strength analysis. Um, there's also immense clarity that there's strength and HVS against the Japanese yen. I'll show you other work that we've done there um, to the upside on big time frames and on shorter time frames. So you've got to do 360 degree analysis. So there's a lot in the program that it's just uh, and it's all part for my premium guys. I'm sorry it takes way too much to cover, um, but I'm giving you guys some idea of the thinking process so that you can value that which we do in our program and how we analyze uh, charts. So we want to go in and look at this weak right shoulder and see what we've got in there. So this is a drop down for you. Which brings us to this piece of price behavior that you now see in front of you. I'm going to remove the volume uh, on FX. You don't get um, the full market volume anyway. You just get broker based uh, and I just need a cleaner lines to the chart. So for us, um, you had the strong sell-off that came down, then this first rebound, this first rebound over here. So there's kind of a low one. Now, you don't always get perfection. You might find that that's weak on this particular broker's exchange when marginally lower than the other. This was exceedingly brutal, this sell-off from what we call the H1 on our um, uh, methodology. There was invariably news. There always is. That is what I call a slap in the face event. In other words, buddy, you're not getting out of jail. You're staying right here uh, type narrative. So you've got a small amount of support there. And again, you're visiting in, uh, you're visiting in there. Um, but it's become quite clear that the resistance, the resistance levels over here have descended. Um, so you're getting a squeeze as well. So the squeezing is coming. That's what's meant by this line here. The squeeze is coming across the top on the high side. Also, you'll note from my previous annotations done with straight lines uh, here that you had rising wedge. I was watching this structure along the baseline with great, great interest when this was occurring. And then you have what I call a little blow off out the top, that piece right there. Time to change color to orange. It'll blow off out the top and your midpoint is running largely through here. Um, this is a volatility squeeze event. So once again, I talk about that key moment when you need to be focusing. You can't sprint a marathon. You need life, you need to be out there riding your bicycle, your motorbike, jumping in the swimming pool, whatever the case may be, if it's summer um, or, or whatever you do to relax, um, you need to be uh, free to be doing that. And this um, is very much a focal point event. That grinding there that I was watching and that blow off out the top is the beginning of the end of the wedginess. Listen to that language, wedginess. Oh dear, oh dear. So we were in the lower half after testing the high, resisting back down. Then we went the midpoint back down and then we're grinding along the base. So it's all about the low side here. Finally, we revisit the top end again. Can't hold it, pull back to the mid level, trying to hold their low vol, pop out the top shooting star. So you actually had what I call a focal market sniper event where I put the cross on there and say you need to be focused right there and there for us in our terms this is a relative high one after a fall away low one this is a relative low two that is very similar um, be careful that you might get double bottoming but we just could see from the rising wedge and the failure to have the same zip that that was not going to be the case and our relative high two 
then the spilling um, started to uh, occur. So I'm going to just flick uh, to uh, a small platform where I put a notional amount in to trade that I'm testing to see how uh, the platform functions and also to enjoy the trade. Let's see if it's actually going to load now or has it gone to sleep. Um, this is IG. So this whole browser now, suddenly you need it. Oh, there we go. Um, so what I've done here is I've got uh, an illustration for you of the short trade. So the short trade, geez, you guys, you could be a little more robust, couldn't you? Okay, so the, the notional idea of the short trade was post that collapse event, this was your market sniper event, so I'm gonna go with a mouse here. Um, let's take a snagged picture of this um, because this is far from satisfactory, this uh, platform's not so stable. And we are going to, thank you, give us the camera and we can scribble on the draw with the Snagit picture. So if I'm coming back here and we open this back up, this is the bit about the trailing stops. Forget trailing stops as an exit strategy. Why can't you hear me say that, he says in frustration. So forget trailing stops as an exit strategy. Um, so if we just go to lines here, what I want to illustrate right here is those two contracts short were sold there at that point, post the confirmation of the grind being over after the blow off top in the wedge. So you remember this is all part of a wedge with a grind line uh, and the blow off top you're squeezing here um, and then it sells back down and in. This should be the beginning of rolling over. But FX is tricky and sketchy. So you short there. What do you do? We put our stop here. That's not far away. Essentially, both those contracts are being shorted at the 17 and a half key level of round number. It traded up and it traded down. We started with the work stop at the blow off top and then it came here. That was it. That was our entry. Very quickly, we determined that. Then you get the first move in your favor. You think, great money in the bank, whatever you think, um, off we go. What then happens? Major return move that takes back everything. This is near a top, it's choppy. If you don't understand the key sniper focal point and you don't understand keeping a safe stop, didn't get stopped out, but you would have got into profit and gone all the way back just out of profit. There's a period where you're just out of profit. Then it goes all tight and spills again. That is to the downside. What does it happen? pumps and you think, oh my God, it's all over and it takes you into the red. That's an into the red moment. If you've trailed your stop at any point, you are taken out of this trade with a loss and you never in all likelihood get back in. Trailed stop is busted. If you trailed your stop to that low or the, the peak of that high after that rally, let's say you were patient and you didn't run it down on this. This is already a bigger time frame. I had it on 10 minutes uh, when I first put on the trade. There were plenty of opportunities to trail stop to that high and then down as it broke, down, down, down. You're out. You're out on this rally in most instances. If you put it at the top there, you're out on this rally with a loss. So that is a negative event. That should be green. Um, then you get a real spill. You say, this time you're definitely away. Sure as mustard, this time you're definitely away. But nobody ever lost money by locking in a profit and trailing your stop. What absolute rubbish. What absolute rubbish. All that happens is if you've really done the research and you understand markets truly and you have a method and you have a real reason for shorting, you do not want to kill your babies. Don't suffocate your babies. Give them room to damn well breathe. Um, what happens? You sell, you trail your stop here, down here, you are now I'm locking in guaranteed a minimum profit at the absolute worst, absolute best, whatever the case may be. Um, you trail your stop there and you tapped out on that point right there. That is not even a bad outcome, but it's a pretty disappointing outcome for what may come. 
um, on the basis of a proper macro trade that has potential for a series of targets to the downside. So we dropped right the way down. So you're out here. Remember the game here, and this is what we teach everybody, is not how many trades in a row you can win. It's how tight you can get that risk. Here's my risk, by the way. I think it's about 15 pips at tops. 17,500 to about 17,516. We can go back to the platform and uh, verify that. Uh, that there is risk. It should be colored in red. If that were to, in let's say in the unlikely event, it were to make just the inverted HVF's target. We are way down here off the moon arrow to the downside good in profit. Never mind the 107 head and shoulders top uh, profit. The game is how do I have a decent slugger's chance at a really high reward, low risk trade? How do I get a decent slugger's chance on a really high reward uh, to low risk chance? There is your risk. This will be the inverted HVF's target, which if I take you back, to um, the chart on the here, this will illustrate that target is well off here to trigger. You're going to be uh, significantly down. Even this one is too short a time frame, um, and that one unfortunately is too long a time frame. Skipping around too many draws, too many draws. Uh, but we love it, and you must learn to draw. Let's go back uh, and, and go up on the platform itself to the daily time frame. So the downside setup of that target being made, being projected down there, will run you down to about 113s alone. You will then have triggered the head and shoulders, which on the most conservative draw with a neckline way up there, which is well above the traditional neckline, I would certainly say we've justified the neckline of the 116 uh, level as a key level of significance. So this is all about 125 key level of significance is just run. HVF rules that you'll have enforced and taught on a program. 1600 level, just run. That's your flat neckline. We never entertain sloping lines. We're not interested in that malarkey that so many are playing with. And note, this is really small uh, size. You can set and forget. You're not watching the zigging and the zagging. On the big time frame, it doesn't look like much has really happened. Um, in in that uh, right shoulder, but it's only as you drop down, you can see how that was such a spiky journey in and out and even back there. So the key point, trailing stops will kill you. Get into the big macro trade and maximize, maximize the potential risk reward for your trade. Leave it on, set and forget, do something else. Don't watch it. Don't trade your PL. Doesn't matter. It's not life changing money here. Do it with a size that you're relaxed. If it becomes too all encompassing and you feel you have to keep watching, your size is too big or you chase the market. Note the key points here are being early and having many good reasons for being early. So that wants to be a uh, circle. We're going to do our little uh, sniper draw there. That is being early. There's your sniper circle, right bang in there. Being early, and you could have got marginally earlier, but on the big time frames, this is very early. And then sticking to it, sticking to it. There's your sights, boom, through there and through there. That's your, that's your uh, short. Give me that line, please. That's your sights key sniper focus point, and then walk away, forget it. There you are, leave it, low risk, big expansion. If this goes all the way to 107s, you're talking about a move where you will have gone from 17 and a half to 107. That is the better part of four digits, 1,050 pips, and your risk is minute. Let's get the number on the, the current risk in actual fact. Let's drop it down to the low time frames, and you can get a feel um, for risk rewards um, in this game. That's a bit too tight now. We got we lost the entry. So that stop level. 64, 1764 from 50, 14 pips, 
14 pips for a potential 1,050. A potential 1,050. So if it was 15 pips to 1,000, um, you know, you were two thirds of the way to 100 is to one. Um, you're on a 66 uh, risk reward uh, trade. And, you know, you don't need to do too many of those to bank 40% for the year. You don't need to trade too big um, to do it. And as I say, this may not be the only platform for which I have this trade on. But the key point here is it's something which you can do. It's something that you can set and forget. And you can lose 10 times. You can lose 10 times. You can lose 65 times if you get yourself a 66.6 risk reward trade. Okay, so that's the Euro USD. Note how it's encompassed a number of things. So if we just go back to the edge and we detail what has actually been encompassed in here, all of it is that you are doing a number of things. So let's just analyze them and you can then understand why we do these things and start either doing them yourself or become part of a community that values that and does it. So I'll leave that, uh, Jen, no, let's go. And let's go to a slightly bigger time frame again, and we will write them down for you. What are we doing? What are we doing? Well, we're doing a number of things. So with the draw pen back in there, first of all, if you are shorting dollar, let's make it black pen. <clears throat> We do 360 degree analysis. Look at everything. Have you looked at gold, oil, yen, everything else that is a potential anti-dollar, all markets. Full pattern analysis on all of them. Full pattern analysis with a real method. I'm afraid there's nothing as real to me in the entire realm of technical analysis than HVF method with all its key levels of significance. You say, of course you'd say that. And of course I would. And I can tell you 100% assess, believe that from all logical um, experiences of all other technical analysis methods, which doesn't mean I don't recognize heads and shoulders and traditional technical analysis. I recognize the value HVF method is built on this, but full pattern analysis in all markets before you trade. The principle of being early, but in a logical way that isn't an unnecessary risk, being early. So there was the point when we called this aspect, you could have been in and held since that point. There was the point where we uh, got in here on the relative high two of an inverted HVF right there. And that was a squeeze and resolution to the downsize. To the downside, boom. And then there's the clear analysis of the head and shoulders. So all time frames, all time frames, time frames on all of the above. And we have a special method called three plus one, where we go from super macro, trend view, pattern view, trigger time frame view. You will learn all about this on a program. Then we look at five stages of the breakout, many other theories to understand where you are in the method and identify the sniper focus zones where the market will show you it's about to move. Sniper focus zones. This would have been one. As an example, you could have got a prime in your funnel and could have traded it long. How about that trade? Exit there. Anyone good with that? Getting over, uh, getting right up to the 124 mark and missing out all of that churn and then getting back in there to the short side, um, trading it down to south. Not getting shaken out because of the rally because you recognize it's a funnel. How about that? Um, and then this setup, possible rally coming. There's going to be support again zonally here. It isn't going to go all your own way. It's not going to not test you. If you remember this entry, this short time frame entry here, you will recognize the market doesn't make it easy for you. It's a bucking bronco. So what will we, what will happen again here? Likelihood of a rally for a third impulse right there. And it'll shake out all people that don't understand 
or don't have a method. Where were the other sniper zone points, seeing I was talking about that? Right damn well there. High focus, everything else takes second place. Wife says, your buddy's on the phone. Sorry, you can't take the call. You'll call him back. It's late at night and you're sleeping, but you've just seen it and it's a key moment. Get out of bed. The market doesn't do it when you are ready. You've got to take the opportunities it's offering when it's offering. I can't think and run out into my orchard and say, I've got loads of energy. I'll pick fruit today. I have to be ready even if I'm feeling sick. If it's the season for picking fruit, you've got to get out of bed and go pick the fruit. You don't dictate to the orchard when the gifts are to be offered. What's going to be coming next? There will be, this was for your early entries, which is an advanced technique we teach on the program, right there to relative high to right there. Without a trail stop, that's kept you in the trade. You're short from 17 and a half, and you can see it's trading 115.83. Most guys are sitting there grabbing 50 pips and are wetting the pants with delight for um, securing that for themselves. Uh, and, oh, I can just do 50 pips a day. No, the money's made in the sitting. The money's made in the sitting recognizing the big moves. Could this still fail? Yes, it could. Will half of YouTube that are all um, the, the cynics and skeptics who've never made a buck in their life all come out and want to tell me oh, how you were wrong? Sure, they will. That's not about them. It's not about their inadequacies. It's about you and recognizing that you can be wrong 40 times in a row if you're landing a uh, 41 to risk reward uh, trade. Is it definitely going to happen? No. Can you take some money off the table earlier to ensure you come out a winner? Yes. With our method, you would take that target from roughly where the uh, target is. You can close 50% of your trade. You can show you come out a winner regardless, and you can leave the rest as your bonus lottery ticket that could see your green out zone on your trade run all the way down to where we are, 1.7 through 1.7. That could be your reward. You can't even see how small that risk is up top there. This pen is too fat to cover it. That is the nature of the game. High reward to low risk trading, recognizing that key moment when you're getting truly, truly a real damn gift. And do you think you on every trade by yourself will be able to do every single aspect? And I've not even completed this list in the left corner. Will you be the guy that every time you trade, never, never submitting to compulsion and skipping some steps and never forgetting or completely doing every single time, every single one of these things and understanding the method just by watching the free views on the YouTube. You know what? You can get a lot with free views on a YouTube, but you don't get the whole enchilada. I'm afraid that's how it is. We're doing a free webinar on the 31st of January, uh, January, July um, on it's not what you make, it's what you keep, and the value of high reward to very low risk trading. If I wanted to, the stake I could have put on this could have been substantially higher. It may be on other platforms. Um, this is something I'm demonstrating to you. Uh, the, point, the point is, when you keep your FX trade to a mere 14 pips of risk, 100 pound a point is 1,400 pound. If that's too big for you, £10 a point is £140. That's the cost of doing business and it's the potential gain you then get. You can decide with you. So for those of you that are interested to find out more about how we implement these methods and recognizing the key sniper zone points where the market will tell you which way it's going. We never know 100%. There is no knowing. But we know it's a key point and the market will show us. And we have the ability to be early 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 why because of the financial mathematics of risk reward financial mathematics of risk reward and because we trade fast moving trades that's risk reward ratio we have an extra parameter that no ever no other trader that i know of has buy time fast moving impulsive trades that give you a lot of movements in a short time. We want that Pythagoras line um, on that triangle. Fast move in short time where that is time 
and that is your profit gained. That is breakout trading. That is high risk reward ratio trading to a certain time frame. Okay, hope that's valuable. Hope that's interesting. This is live. You can watch it. Um, you can come and say boo if when it fails, um, or you can just enjoy the principle of that and recognize this can fail and um, it can succeed. But the game is your risk reward ratio. Um, and it is not for everyone. Most don't get it. Most get emotional. Most get greedy. It's a personal development program. I don't mention this to everyone until they've committed to the program, but you are actually in a personal development program. That is right. You will become more in self-aware. You'll become more disciplined and more patient. Other things and aspects of your life are going to improve by becoming a better trader. Do not expect this to come easily. Guys that think I've paid my money, therefore now I get rich. It's down to you to make me rich. Sorry, not for you. Not for you. Do not come. Don't come. You are in a state of fantasy. There is no easy money anywhere. Anything that requires um, you to make uh, these kind of returns requires discipline, requires development, and requires you to be a better person within yourself and able to submit to method. Okay, that's a long clip. The webinar's on the 31st of July. If you like what you've seen, only if you like what it's seen, and you accept that this is about teaching you a method, not throwing you fish, teaching you to fish, and you've got to catch a very, very clever, cunning fish. Okay, um, enjoy yourselves and speak to you soon um, on the channel and hope you enjoyed the new um, joy, joy thing as big a mess as I have now made. Bye for now.